Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman. I hope all of you are having a great day. We have a wonderful day here with you with, uh, well, Linux. And, you know, we have our resident Linux expert here with us joining us in just a moment. And that is, of course, Marcel Gagné. So, and uh, with that being said, uh, a couple of things to mention, including, and this one's a big one because he spent a lot of time on it, and, you know, it just makes the show that much easier when it comes to, uh, you know, just kind of what we do here at ComputerAmerica.com. Right there on the home front page, you see the show notes, and those have everything we're, we're going to be talking about today. And folks, hey, just makes it super simple. Uh, while you're there, also check out the contest, social media contest brought to you by Logitech. And be sure to check out the video stream where you can not only listen to Computer America, but you can watch Computer America. It's, uh, you know, we're still primarily a radio show. Right, right, right. But we, you can actually see us as well. So, hey, it's a lot of fun. Join us. You won't regret it. So, with that being said, I think we're just going to jump right into this because, you know, hey, uh, we have a lot to talk about and we rarely ever finish everything we want to. So, I'll just bring him on, the one, the only, Mr. Marcel Gagné. So, Marcel, how you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing uh, moderately neato. How are you doing? <laughs> That that must be some weird Canadian term. I'm doing well. Thank you. No, it's not. No, it's not. I stole that from George Carlin, actually. Re I haven't heard his stuff in forever. Yeah, well, that's because he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that too. But I'm glad but that you're. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but but I'm glad that you're well. And I think we should, uh, before we get you know truly started with everything Linux, we should uh, introduce yourself and you know maybe new listeners. Uh, you know what makes you so special. What makes me so special? Well, I'm unique like everyone else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I, I had to say that for my son. But anyway, no, um, I'm, uh, I'm a longtime journalist and uh, proponent of uh, Linux and open source software. Uh, in fact, I have been writing about and talking about and doing videos about and doing radio shows about and so forth, uh, Linux and open source software since so late 1990s so mm -hmm. you know for quite a few years now so that's uh that's kind of what uh what uh you know what i'm doing here uh, i also did a column for a number of years in a magazine called the linux journal uh, which was called cooking with linux in which i in which i impersonated a french chef and uh, i had a restaurant with a huge uh, wine um, you know a huge collection of wine huge wine cellar mm -hmm. i had uh, had a waiter who you know a long suffering waiter who helped me out with things and uh, and all this was wrapped around the idea of linux and open source software and uh, to this day uh, although i'm not uh, writing in the linux journal at the moment uh, i do continue with uh, cooking with linux uh, both on a website and uh, also lately on um, YouTube because uh, you know YouTube's a thing now in, like, in uh, 2018. I don't know if you know that. Uh, I can tell you about YouTube if you like. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of a new, a new fangled thing. Yeah, no, YouTube is uh, it, it, it's crazy. Like it's certainly grown. They uh, you know between YouTube and Twitch and all these other things, the idea that people can put themselves on the internet and you know spread around what they know, what they do, and do it easily. I mean, it's never been easier. But at the same time. I think that they're being flooded with so much uh, inappropriate things that there's a real need for something, you know, that you can actually sit down and enjoy. Yeah, there's, you know, this is actually a... We could, uh, I'm sure if you, I'm sure there must be somebody out there who's listening to us who uh, who has heard about or is thinking about, can you believe that? I, uh, <laughs> Perfect timing for that. There. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, and, and of course, if anyone out there, if you want to check out, of course, uh, his YouTube, we have a link to it right there in the show notes, but as well, hey, check it out there. But you were saying. 
I apologize for that. I apologize for that. It's like, you know, I, I stuck I stick the phone in another room and I can still hear it from here. This is terrible. <laughs> so I apologize. Anyway, what I was gonna say about YouTube is yeah, right now everybody's been talking about the you know the the Logan Paul thing and the amount of inappropriate material that's sitting on YouTube. So yeah, I can sort of dig it. But but I do want to point out, since you mentioned YouTube, my YouTube channel is Freethinker at Large. So youtube.com slash Freethinker at Large. F-R-E-E-T-H-I-N-K-E-R-A-T-L-A-R-G-E. Go and subscribe right this very minute. I'm trying of to get course. up to 1,000. I'm at you know, almost 800 at the moment, so or over 800, actually, this morning. So go, go, go. Go subscribe right now. Okay, I've done that. Now, let's move on. <laughs> sure. No, and, uh, and of course, uh, so he mentioned Cooking with Linux, and one part of Cooking with Linux was always, of course, that waiter with the wine. And, yeah, you know, uh, why don't we go ahead and talk about the wine? Because you do something Can that we talk I, about the wine? And, and it's real quick. I mean, you do something I should definitely do more often, and that is drink on the air. I think it just makes everything go so <laughs> much smoother. <laughs> you know, actually, it's one of the reasons I, I love doing stuff like this. It's because, uh, you know, it gives me an excuse to drink at any time of the day. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, today, today, uh, I'm drinking a Portuguese wine. This is called a Portacis. Uh, I can't, uh, you know, I apologize for my uh, bad Portuguese. But anyway, uh, Porta Six, uh, in other words, door number six is a um, from the uh, Lisboa region of Portugal. And it's a nice, deep, ruby red wine. And I'm going to just, you know, hold up my glass here. And, uh, you know, if you, you can see my glass there. Mm -hmm. There we go. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's a lovely wine. It's a very, um, like I said, it's a deep red, very jammy. If you like that kind of deep red, you know, dark berry sort of taste. Um, there's a nice spice on the palate. So it's got a little bit of that Shirazi sort of spice to it, if you know what I'm talking about. Right. And um, I call it light to medium finish it doesn't have a particularly long finish but it's a it's a pleasant wine it's got it's got some nice zing to it because of that spiciness and uh i would highly recommend it porta sis or porta six or just door number six it's a portuguese <laughs> wine check it out check it out all right all right no it sound uh, jammy that's the first time i've ever heard that adjective so seriously yeah jammy Seriously? Hmm. yeah jammy it, it's 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 like you know like raspberry jam you know um, right deep dark jammy sort of flavors it's very, it's lovely i got you i got you so now the wine is always fun but <laughs> this of course brings us I, into I, I just these guys these like geez, i have to look this up right now clack, 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 clack. okay <laughs> but this of course leads us into linux and you have a number of stories here and i guess the news rumors you and know, such have been piling up yeah i mean there's this you know there's always tons of stories and of course i'm always trying to pick from a small handful of things uh, that are happening out there the big thing of course uh if you've been and i'd be surprised if you didn't talk about it on the show at some point is the whole specter and meltdown thing uh the Lately, intel yeah. processor flaw mm -hmm. uh, which of course is uh is also uh you know also leads to you know various exploits uh, Linus Torvalds has been beating up on um, Intel, uh, and uh, Linus is, is an interesting character because he's not a guy who minces words. <laughs> he's not afraid. He's not afraid to cuss and swear. <laughs> so, um, so there are a bunch of things out there that talk about uh, you know what Linus is, uh, what Linus thinks of the whole uh, Intel issues, and uh, this happens, by the way, to AMD chips as well. And there is a way. Uh, to fix these things. Well, first of all, there are um, kernel updates, which um, there was a lot of worry that this would have a huge impact on the performance of your PC. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I will have to say that I've actually installed, um, I mean, I've installed the latest kernels and I've installed the, um, the test software to make sure that I'm clean. And yes, uh, the stuff is actually clean at the moment. But what surprises me is that um, I haven't, really noticed any impact on performance and uh, there were all these fears that you know it could be like 25 30 percent uh, performance impact but i i don't notice it in the least so uh, i think we've come out on the um on the good side of this particular thing but um but it is still a concern so if you have servers out there and this is true by the way in the windows world anything that uses intel amd type chips uh arm chips are not uh, affected. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so people out there who are running ARM systems and usually virtualized software is not, is not, um, uh, may or may not be impacted depending on the virtualization software that you're using. 
Um, but you should certainly check it out. And I do have a couple of links to stories about, uh, you know, how the vulnerability is affecting things in the Linux world. And um, actually, I'll do it after the show. I'll add it after the show so that uh, people can go and take a look at it as well. But there's a little piece of software that I found, a really easy little piece of software to run that lets you see whether or not you even have the vulnerability on your system. So I will do that sure. so that it's after the, after the show. Yeah, the uh, you know the speed estimates I had read were you know like you said in some cases twenty five thirty was the theoretical maximum uh, slowdown, but they said that those would happen for essentially people running very intensive multi core multi thread uh, CPU applications. So essentially, if you like, let's say you have like a core i nine and you had like sixteen cores and you max them out one hundred percent of the time every single day for whatever you're doing. Um, you may see, you know, that 25, 30%. But, you know, if you're running like a, you know, let's say an i3 or something like that, uh, only a few cores and you never max them out, your your impact that you're going to see from that is really not that much because, you know, unless you're crunching, uh, you know, numbers, it wasn't going to affect you. The places where it would affect you or at least where it would affect you, uh, you know, kind of roundabout ways would be services like Amazon Cloud or Microsoft Cloud, things like that, where, you know, like these online services that they do all the processing power for you. So I think that the average consumer kind of got away, you know, kind of scot-free, but these large, large companies... easy on this, certainly. Yeah, the, the, these large, large companies... You keep cutting out on me. I keep, you keep disappearing on me here. Uh oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think our internet connection is none too good, and that's no good. But uh, but but yeah, I, I, just... I, I kept I kept thinking it's because you were at a loss for words. You know, it's like, it, but but this is not a normal thing for you. You're not usually at a loss for words, and it's like he's talking and he just suddenly vanishes. It's like what happened? Yeah, I I have no idea. Uh, but just to wrap up the idea was that uh, the average consumer kind of got away with uh, meltdown and uh, Spectre pretty easily. But then, uh, you know, the large corporations, they're the, one who are, they're the ones who are going to be affected. And I guess, you know, Linus Torvald, he's very vocal. He's very <laughs> – he likes to make headlines, and, you know, it's hard to disagree with him at the same time. You know, I'm not sure that – you know, I'm not sure that that's true. I'm not sure that it's because he likes to make headlines. I think he's just – he's an outspoken guy who doesn't really give a damn what you think. You know, so – so I'm not sure that it's a question of him, of him, um, you know, wanting the spotlight or anything like that. In fact, in, in a lot of ways, he tends to avoid the spotlight. It just seems to be that he just doesn't care. That that's you know right. he, he, he doesn't care, but also, like you said, he doesn't shy away from it. And no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Intel, I mean, Intel is huge. Um, they, they're a company that you don't want to piss off. But I guess if you're Linus Torvald, hey, you know more power to you so uh so you said that you can check your uh your linux servers your desktop if they have the patch um honestly i i mean is this something that you would recommend everyone do or is this such a like a minor thing that eh. you know almost every i mean there are always vulnerabilities and and uh, i Sometimes I hate going down this particular road because of, of what it means. For the most part, most people really don't have to worry too much about this. Um, but it's probably a good idea. You know, I mean, uh, the as with a lot of these things, the exploits aren't necessarily, um, you know, rampant, as in this isn't like necessarily a massive problem. It's what it is, is it's potentially a massive problem. And uh, obviously, it needs to be dealt with because if you leave big giant holes open for long enough, people are going to take advantage of those big giant holes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is definitely one of those cases. But if you are running a server, like if you're running a web server out there or something like that, then oh, for goodness sakes, by all means, <laughs> fix <Right>. it. <laughs> right. And if you are updating your PCs on a regular basis, in other words, if you're downloading the updates that uh, your your distributor provides for you, uh, this typically is not. You know, this typically is not going to be an issue because, um, you know, unless it's, you know, uh, unless it's a hobby project out there somewhere that doesn't get updated, you know, regularly, um, you will have the patch. It, the fix will be rolled into what you're running. So typically it's not a big deal, but yeah, you should probably still check it to make sure that, you know, you either are covered now or it has, uh, you know, or it's still something that needs to be taken care of. I'm happy to report that the PC that I'm using at this very moment is clean. So there you go. <laughs> 
hear that hear that hackers that is not an easy target go for someone else <laughs> so no and, and uh and very well said and you know that whole specter meltdown thing it was it, it was definitely a huge story um i don't think the worst case scenarios truly played out but at the same time future intel products they say they're going to be okay so intel is not irreparable is not irreparable irreparably yeah uh damaged but at the same time uh it was a big deal so yeah yeah and i mean when you're like you know one of the few games in town if you will then yeah you're only going to be affected so much that's for sure that that too that too all right so there's let's move on yeah there's specter meltdown uh so let's talk about this next one and with google all right. Um, with uh, this next one, with Google, uh, let me see. Uh, right, Google has. Uh, you may not know this, but uh, well, I've, I've I've mentioned this to you. But Google is has like a, this huge, massive architecture of Linux boxes. In fact, the company is built on open source software, on Linux and open source software. But what they've been doing is they've been using in house a distribution which uh, is uh, sometimes referred to as Ubuntu, which is uh, Ubuntu tweaked and up and you know and modified with different skin and so forth uh, for Google themselves. So they've actually been using Canonical and uh, and Ubuntu to run all their Linux PCs in house. Now that's not the PCs on the back end, by the way, that run the um, that run like the uh, the actual search. Those things in the back end are are you know deeply heavily massively customized this is what people are developers and so forth are using in-house so they're actually switching to plain old debian and uh, debian is the uh is the is the version of linux on which ubuntu is actually based and debian has been um well has been around for a heck of a long time um but it is not a company it's it is actually a community project as opposed to a um, as opposed to a uh, you know a, project headed by a company as ubuntu is with canonical in the lead so it's it's kind of big news because ubuntu slash canonical uh, was a uh, sorry uh, google rather was a customer of ubuntu slash canonical and uh, now they are no longer going to be one of the customers now <clears throat> Google has always been contributing to the code and continues to contribute to the code. So all that stuff is going to go back upstream uh, into the distribution. But uh, the the support, you know, the the monetary support to uh, Ubuntu slash Canonical is going to disappear. So that's why this is actually a big story. That's the reason for that one. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things about Linux is that you have these different communities and especially the ones that are, you know, kind of driven by the community. Um, it's interesting. I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not expecting you to be an expert on every little faction within Linux, but I mean, do do, do these people kind of get uh, not intimidated, but annoyed that because when Google comes in and does something like this, like even though they have their own tweak, uh, it was a, a G Linux. I mean, even when they have their own tweak, isn't Debian a bit more, uh, you know? Uh, kind of willing to go the way of Google if Google says, hey, we need this to work this way? Like, aren't they willing to go against the community to keep their customer? I wouldn't say that. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Specifically, uh, see, the, the, the open source philosophy behind these things is, is such that anyone is allowed to do with it as they please, okay? Uh, Debian has a history of being used in data centers. It, it's partly because doesn't tend to follow the bleeding edge. It doesn't tend to be the latest and greatest, you know, as far as desktop and graphical software and so forth. It tends to concentrate on providing a very, very stable experience. And that has been, that has been Debian's claim to fame over the years and why, like I said, it's been, you know, it's used in data centers. And of course they try to concentrate on using primarily uh, open software as opposed to, you know, proprietary, um, uh, what's sometimes referred to as proprietary blobs or, or you know, um, code that's provided by a specific vendor, but right. it's not in itself open source. Like, for instance, a video driver or something like that. A distribution like Debian tends to be more of a purist distribution. Sure, NVIDIA has a proprietary driver that you can use on your PC, but uh, we'll recommend and we'll tend to use the one that is completely and fully open source. So it's it's more of a philosophical thing than, uh, you know, I'm not sure I want a big company behind it. Because let's face it, I mean, even if you're running a community project, you know, um, having the having the financial backing of a large company is, is nothing that any of these groups is going to say no to. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, 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 you know, the one thing I was worried about was, you know, maybe there's uh, in the future, there's going to be like a new uh, file management system where there's going to be a new way to do something behind the scenes that Google is going to say, we don't like that. And I'm wondering if they're going to change their minds as opposed to maybe going their own way. And you know, like, that's the part where yeah, I, but, yeah. Yeah, just keep in mind that Google is going to modify Right. their Debian distribution. So no matter what, they're modifying this. It is not going to be, you know, exactly out of the box. They're going to do their own tweaks to it. But in the spirit of open source software and frankly, the licensing of, you know, of open source, uh, all those things will be rolled back into the community. And at that point, people can decide to use or not to use those changes. So I gotcha. So, uh, and, and by the way, can people actually download this or is it just like a password, a password thing only for Google employees? The, that's going to be an internal thing, okay? Uh, I don't even know that you could download Gubuntu. I would actually have to check that out. But uh, GLinux, obviously, is the uh, Debian version that, that they are switching to. Um, since all the changes are being rolled back in, since the changes are being rolled back into the community, I don't see that that would be an issue. Okay. Let's just, uh, let's, let me tippy-tap and find out. Can you download? Download Gubuntu. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I, I Googled it myself and it looked like they just had like a lot of information about it, but nowhere to actually download it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. that's that's kind of that's kind of the way it is. And if you think about it, I mean, all that the all that the requirements are in the open source community is that you make the source code available. OK, mm -hmm. so if I modify something in a in a GNU or a GPL licensed product, for instance, or a piece of software, all that I have to do to to live by the letter of the um, of the license mm -hmm. is to make the source code available to people. Nothing says that I have to provide a full blown you know, ISO right. distribution, only that the code is available. So if you want to roll your own based on that, sure, the code is all out there, but you might have to do some of the work for it. That's all that it comes down to. But that, but they're not hiding anything. They're not holding anything back, okay? They're just not, they're just not making it easy on you. They're just not giving you the disk. <laughs> right. So, uh, okay, makes perfect sense. And there's Google. So let's go to our next one. I think we can squeeze one more story here before the break. Okay. Yeah. All right. The ne the next story. Actually, this one I I'm I'm gonna mention this one because uh, because it's uh, you know I I wrote for the Linux Journal for many 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 years uh, and that's where the Cooking with Linux column originated. Uh, I did that there for more than ten years in the Linux Journal. Um, but uh, the Linux Journal actually uh, closed up shop in December. They announced that they'd run out of money. They couldn't keep the magazine alive, and that was the end of it. So they put out a uh, they put out a uh, press release in December that said, really sorry, this is terrible, uh, but it's over. We, we've had a long run. Life was good. Thank you. So thanks for all the fish, you know, so long and thanks for all the fish. Right. And that was it. That was the end of it. Okay. And many people wrote about it, including myself and, you know, very sad and, you know, talked to our community, you know, respective communities and, and, uh, you know, held vigil for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> held a service for for the departed Linux journal. And on January 1st, of all things, they announced that they were coming back from the dead. Hmm. And uh, are long. you familiar with... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> are you familiar with the uh, VPN company, uh, PIA, or, or Private Internet Access? Yeah, we actually had them on the show here a couple of months ago. Yeah, of course. I love those guys. I love those guys. They're... I have been using... PIA for a few years now. I have it on my phone. I have it on my tablets. I use it on my desktop, my Linux desktop PC here. Um, on my desktop Linux PC, sometimes it's to, you know, if, if I'm doing something that's sensitive, I go through a VPN. But uh, I also use it when I play a YouTube video that says this video is not allowed, you know, it's not available yeah. in your area. It's like, yeah, fine. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to show the mid my middle finger to the camera here, but you know what I'm talking about. It's 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 like, hey, uh, this video is not available in Canada, and you're like, oh, okay, don't worry, I'll Fine, go to my, I'll, in Canada. I'll, I'll go to my U.S. office, and three seconds later, you're in your U.S. office, right? Precisely, it's... precisely. Don't get me started on this stuff. I I hate that. It's like, <laughs> come on. It's not like we can't get around this. Yeah. I mean, this is the freaking internet. And, and and before you make your point about uh, private internet access, I will say that as a company, they are very good. I don't know if they are nerds themselves or if they, they have someone, but they're very good at helping and doing things that nerds care about. So they're... They are major big time geeks. Right. Th their PR is like... 
should be the playbook that most tech companies go by because I think they do it really well. Like, you know, they're not sponsoring me. I don't know if they're sponsoring you. But they are not. Right, they are but, not. But, I, have, I have no... I have no financial, uh, you know, uh, backing from the company in any way, shape, or form. And in fact, in fact, I pay for their service, so I right. pay them for the privilege of talking about the fact that I like them. Right, but you know, they're they're very good at what they do. So you were saying about Linux kernel. Yes, and... yes. So PIA, uh, PIA, like I said, they're you know they're a bunch of geeks who happen to love Linux and open source software. And in fact, they use like Open Open VPN as part of the uh, as, as part of the software that drives their VPN software, and uh, they looked at the plight of Linux Journal and said, you know what, we'll pay for it. <laughs> so they basically contacted the magazine after it closed up shop and said, you know what, we don't want the magazine to go away and we will support it and back it financially to keep it going. So the new owners and operators of Linux Journal is PIA, a private internet access. Very, very cool. That, that was- uh... I, I think it is. Yeah, that was uh, super, super cool of them. So, I mean, so they're able to keep going, and I'm assuming they're still good to go. Like, they're still on everything, right? Yeah, the website is back in operation. The website had vanished uh, briefly, uh, you know, over Christmas and so forth. It's like, you know, it, it's gone. We're not doing this anymore. Uh, there was a statement, and everything is back online. Everything is back in operation. They're, they're back to producing. Now, they, they haven't been producing a paper issue for a long time. Uh, Linux Journal has been uh, has been PDF and you know web based for a while now, but uh, they're they're back in operation, doing what they were doing and in the way that they were doing it, producing a um, you know a regular uh, monthly PDF issue of the magazine. You if you have a subscription, your subscription goes on as it did, and uh, and of course you can buy subscriptions to uh, to the magazine going forward as well. So um, so. It was kind of the original magazine of the Linux community. It dates back, like basically, right to the you know to the early days of uh, of Linux itself. And um, now they're still out there, and they're still um, you know, and they're still uh, talking about and explaining and helping people learn about and use uh, Linux and open source software. And um, you know, all these years later, and and again, that's thanks to private internet access. Uh, so way to go, guys! Yeah. Kudos. Kudos in uh, like kudos, uh, ku kudos. Kudos. right? So and, and yeah, and, and you know, and you know, it's a, a Linux site because they have a free node IRC right there at the bottom. Um, no, this is a uh, super cool, and you know, it doesn't. It's not like a giant advertisement for private internet access. It everything looks, you know, I don't really even see any kind of advertising for them. It's just kind of doing its thing, which is super cool to see. So. Not yeah, bad. I, I think so. I think so too. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, I, I have a soft, warm spot in my heart for the Linux Journal. Like I said, I haven't been a, a you know, a, I mean, after, after writing for them for like twelve years, it was like, okay, yeah, it's probably good for now. Uh, <laughs> <but> <laughs> so it was, it was there, there was nothing bad happening. It was just, you know, I've been doing this for an awfully long time now. I have several hundred articles under my belt, and you know, both on their website and in the magazine. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> no, makes perfect but, sense. Uh, they, I, like I said, I have a very soft and warm spot for them. So I'm happy that they're back. I'm happy that, and, and again, you know, it's, it's, it's nice that somebody came forward and, uh, and is, uh, you know, keeping that torch lit. Right. All right. That, so that's, that's, that's an Olympic reference, by the way, the torch. Yeah. The Olympics are going on the winter Olympics <laughs> and man, the, I, I, I don't know something about the winter Olympics. They don't feel like they're as dramatic as the summer games, but they're so much cool. All right, no pun. They're so much cooler than than the uh, than the summer Olympics. Like the snowboarders and the skiers. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, you know, I I agree. Actually, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of of skating. You know, of the skating competitions. Oh, for sure. It's like, it's like poetry in motion. It actually is. I mean, there's something really cool, obviously, about the snowboarders and the ski jumpers and stuff like that. I mean, this is all cool stuff. But it's not the same thing as watching figure skaters. Figure skaters, it's it's like it's this. Like I said, it's poetry in motion. It really, really is, and it's uh, it's it's phenomenal to watch. I mean, and uh, and I'm not, I am not a sports fan. Like, uh, let me make this perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yay, yay I team! Watch, I will watch. You know, uh, the especially I will watch the Winter Olympics. I'm I don't typically watch the Summer Olympics, but I will watch the Winter Olympics. Right. Uh, uh, trust me, I am huge about sports. Uh, go team! And I don't. I, <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, with that being said, uh, Marcel, I will say that we are about to head out into break. When we come back, I think we're going to talk about uh, these last two stories. Also, let's encrypt.org. We'll talk about that as well. Oh, yeah. And of cool course, our, 
yeah and of course our distribution focus as well so everyone stay tuned more computer america more marcel gagne and cooking with linux check it out in the show notes with links to everything folks hey stay tuned we'll be right back Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 31 minutes past the hour as we continue on here. And hey, it's everything Linux. Part of me feels like we should get... uh, you know, custom Linux music and everything. But hey, folks, uh, if you are listening or if you miss any part of today's show, feel free to go back and listen to the podcast version available wherever podcasts are heard, including, of course, iTunes, Google Play Store, iHeartRadio, blah, 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 wherever, you know, wherever they're heard, you can hear it. So yeah, if you're just joining us, welcome back in talking with Marcel Gagné, cooking with Linux. And right, we are about to get into this next story. Uh, I'm not sure, Marcel, if you wanted to pick any particular order, but uh, yeah, I mean, up to you. All right. Well, <clears throat> <laughs> sorry about that. Hey, let's let's actually just let's do them in order. Let's do this one. Sure. So there was a big high profile change a number of years ago. And the big high profile change was that uh, Munich decided to abandon uh, Windows and switch to uh, to Linux. And this was like this was quite a few years ago. So this is like really, really old news now. And um, and of course, uh, you know, I'll preface this by saying that a lot has changed in those years. Um, but at some point, somebody, uh, you know, there were new people who came into city council at Munich and somewhere along the way said, you know, we're going to go back and switch back to, to Microsoft. So that was kind of a uh, <clears throat> that was kind of a big story because it was like it was a Microsoft to Linux and then back from Linux to Microsoft sort of story. So right. now we have uh, we have Barcelona. Barcelona is really fascinating in a number of ways. First of all, they are part of an open cities project uh, that uses a, um, a scintilla. Scintilla is that what the name of the software is worth? Is mm. called. Um, it is a it is a completely open source software that basically is designed to be kind of an AI for cities. It monitors everything about the cities. It does things like turns on streetlights if there are people walking, you know, and if there's nobody around, the streetlights are dimmed or they're off in certain areas. It monitors garbage bins to decide whether they need to be emptied or not so that, you know, there aren't trucks always driving around for these things. And if the things are full, the trucks go and pick them up. So they're, it's it's designed to be like, a, you know, a super intelligent city. And now they've decided that they are going to shift their operations uh, entirely to Linux from Windows. Now, the uh, the little bit of the backstory on that is well obviously it's it's to save money I mean it's it's you know it's like we don't have to pay for licensing for free and open source software and of course we can make it do whatever it is we want to do mm-hmm. but the fact is th- that move has been happening in Barcelona for a while anyway so there have been a number of people who have been using open source software so this isn't a this isn't a massive massive jump for them because they're kind of used to it anyway um, but it's a it's a big high profile move. And um, it's going to be interesting to see. So, well, yeah, and cities project that's really quite fascinating. Yeah, yeah, no, these uh, you know I've seen some of them out at CES and places like that, where these smart cities, it's it's very interesting what they can do, or at least you know the technology that you find within your own home nowadays with uh, you know the Internet of Things, that on a citywide scale is going to be very impressive. But I guess you know making it all work together, I. 
guess that's something that uh, you know might take something as customizable as Linux because it's not like yeah. you know it, it's not like running ten thousand webcams off of Windows is exactly a suitable thing. You know, it's it's going to have to be pretty customized. Well, and that's that's just it. I mean, these are not typically the sorts of things that you can just pull out of a box. OK, um, you know, you, you can't walk in the local store. Now, that isn't to say, I mean, let's 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 face it, a company like Microsoft. Yes, they sell an awful lot of product. And like a lot of companies, you know, they're moving to the cloud these days. So a lot of the product offerings that they've got are, you know, are online offerings anyway, software as a service or or in this in some cases, hardware as a service uh, with the Azure cloud. But um, uh, the. In the, the, in the customizability that you have running Linux does make it so that you can pretty much do anything that you want with these things. And of course, if you are working within, with other municipalities, like you know, within the Open Cities Project, um, and, and again, I really, really have it, Centillo, Centillo, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna drive me crazy. I'll try to put that in the show notes after, uh, after we wrap this up. Um, but uh, the, um, the, the software can then be shared with other communities in other areas. And then once that's done, you learn from each other and you make modifications as you go and you streamline and you tweak and eventually you wind up with what it is you want as opposed to what somebody else wants to create for you or what somebody else thinks they want to create for you. So um, so that's a big deal from the uh, infrastructure perspective. But, you know, we're also talking desktops here. So when they're talking about Barcelona switching to Linux here, they're actually talking about in the offices, you know, people actually sitting down and, and using their little word processors and, and spreadsheets. Right. Yeah. Know, and uh, spreadsheets. Yeah. And, 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 and I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you I, I should really scroll through this. Um, I think. I, I I don't know if you oh you did uh, LibreOffice 6.0 came out. Uh, yes. I received the press release for that. And we'll, you know we'll touch on that later in the program. But uh, yeah, before we jump ahead to all the other things, uh, let's talk about this last one real quick. Let's encrypt. What is this? And am oh, I about yeah. to get encrypted? I, I found out about this yesterday. It's one of those things that you know I I it's like it's like how did I not know about this? How did I know not not know about this? You probably heard uh, you hey maybe you've covered it on the show. You can tell me. But Google has decided that everybody is going to need to have an SSL website now. Right. Yes. Or, you know, are they going to punish you by, you know, pushing you down inside? You know, the algorithm is going to say, I don't like you because you don't have an SSL website. So that's that HTTP colon slash slash versus HTTPS colon slash slash. So it's a secure uh, website. Now, secure websites are all fine and good, except for the fact that, um, you have a couple of choices. One of them is you can roll your own SSL certificate. That's free. It doesn't cost you anything. But then other people have to manually accept your certificate when they visit your website. And people typically are not you know, used to doing that. So what you've got, you've got companies uh, that have sprung up over the years that are certificate authorities. So there are companies like uh, like Thought, T-H-A-W. Does that sell around Thought, T H A? WTE, that was one of the big ones. Is this, are they still around? I don't know. Verisign. Yeah. Verisign is another one. I mean, these, these companies are huge companies. And the whole purpose in life, and, and they they resell their product through registrars like GoDaddy or like um, Network Solutions or, or uh, NetFirms, you know, that sort of thing. So they resell their services. They resell these certificates. You buy them for like $60, $70, $80, $100 a year. How, and it depends on how big the server is, uh, how many... Uh, I sorry, how many domains and subdomains that you have, whether it's, um, whether it's a wildcard one where all your domains and subdomains are covered by the same certificate. So it can cost you many hundreds, many thousands of dollars, um, but you know, as little as 60 or $70. If you consider 60 or $70 little when you're somebody who doesn't really make any money off their website, right. you're just some schmuck, you know, or... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and to, you're a small operator. You're a small operator, like yeah. yours truly. And, 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 who, um, and to and sure quick, I mean, just to bring this back, uh, you know, to Computer America as well. I mean, we've kind of put it off as well because I've said this on the air. We don't ask you for a credit card. We don't ask you even for really like an email address or anything like that. Like we don't ask any private information from you. So we really don't uh, feel the need to. But now that Google says anything that's not HTTPS is going to say not, uh, you know, not not certified. It says un uh, insecure, unsecure, whatever. Exactly. Exactly. So it's not it's even a red just mark. a question of you'll get pushed down in the ratings. It will actually flag you as insecure. Right. So yeah, now okay, you need it. Which is which is 
which is scary, which scares people when they come and visit your site. So yesterday I found out about this. Let's Encrypt is a free certificate service. It is a completely open, free and open, as in, you know, uh, true to the open source philosophy where you can get a certificate which is validated, okay, by a certificate authority that in this case does not charge you any money. So That's you can nice. have a certificate generated for your website, for your domain, and get it from this company free of charge. I was blown away. But when I found out about this, it was, it's like, this, this is like the dream come true because, and, and of course it's, it's supported by the Linux foundation, you know, and, and um, the electronic frontier foundation. I mean, there are a bunch of, uh, if you take a look at the sponsors and donors on the page there, you'll see that, you know, there are some, not just big names in the open source world, because you know, a, a lot of big names in the open source world are there, but big companies like Cisco, for instance, are, are, are supporting them. Um, so this, like I said, to me, this was like, you know, just amazing, fantastic, incredible. I can get, instead of spending 70 bucks per domain to get a certificate, and like I said, 70 bucks is kind of the bottom end, okay? I can get a certificate that will be validated inside browsers like Google Chrome and and Firefox and so forth. So it'll be automatically validated, which means uh, which means people don't have to sit there and go, oh, geez, do I really trust this side? Do I accept the certificate and go through all this nonsense? No, it'll just happen just the way that things should happen on the internet, except that now you don't have to fork out huge amounts of money if you are, you know, a, a per, somebody running like per, perhaps a private website, you mm -hmm. know, or sorry, by private, I mean, you know, single individual, like, a, you know, a one person company. And, uh, you know, where 60, 70 bucks a year really does affect you. Right. Yeah. You know, to have to do this every year. So I, I think this is just fantastic. Let's encrypt.org. Um, kudos again. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that is a very cool thing because I've looked into this and, you know, you can, like you said, you can use your own, uh, you know, knowledge and power to make your own certificate, but it, it's not really a good solution because like you said, you have to accept it. And every single person comes on and says, do you accept the certificate? And most people just hit no because weird pop-ups are bad. Well, so, weird pop-ups are bad. And, and of course it's telling you, you know, do you really trust this web? I mean, that's what the question says. Right. Do you really trust this web? I, I don't know. I never really thought about it before today, but, but, and, and a place where it really is a pain in the butt is like on, a, on an email server. So if you've got an email server, like if you get your iPhone or something like that, you know, it pops up and says, you know, do you, do you trust the certificate? Like, are you sure you want to get email from this place? Well, you know, <laughs> uh, that that's true too. That's true too. So very, very cool. I mean, I've personally bookmarked, bookmarked as well. I was about to get, uh, you know, a certificate myself and Hey, we'll, we'll try this out first and see how this You're goes. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> with, uh, with that being said, so tell us about a distribution focus. What is a distribution and why you focus on Let's one? talk distributions. Um, I try to come up with at least one distribution every time we do the show. This time I've actually got more than one because I got carried away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got carried away uh, because I started looking at something and I said, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, I'll try this one instead. Oh, this is kind of cool and so forth. Um, up at the beginning of the show notes, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned James Bond up at the top of the show notes So somebody who actually wants to read that, uh, you know, somewhere in there, I, I'm, I'm sure I mentioned James Bond somewhere in there. Oh yeah. Spectre, Spectre. Remember Spectre, the organization and James Bond, but you know, the villainous yeah. organization. Yeah, of course. Right. Right. Well, anyway, so here we are back with, do you remember Zorin? No. Zorin was a James Bond villain. Remember Zorin? No, 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 no. Oh, no. All right. It was from, uh, uh, was it from Live and Let Die? It might have been from Live and Let Die. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Max anyway, Zorin. Zorin. Ma Max Zorin, A View to Kill. There you go, View to a Kill. Exactly, Max Zorin. Uh, played by Christopher Walken. Yes, sir. Who makes a wonderful villain. The guy is like, you know, I mean, he's got villain all over his face. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, you don't want to mess with Christopher Walken, am I right? Right. Okay, sorry, I'm <laughs> Anyway, Zorin, there's a Linux distribution called Zorin OS. And okay. I decided to try this one out because it's yet another one of these distributions that uh, bills itself as a great replacement for a Windows desktop. And, um, and interestingly enough, it's also a Linux distribution that provides both a free and a paid for version. So they have a free personal version. They have a free educational version, but they also sell a business and a, um, 
uh, a premium version, which you know comes with some additional software. Now, the thing that I want to mention, of course, is that um, with all of these, it's like it's kind of the way that it's packaged and delivered to you. But of course, you can pretty much find any piece of software that you know that's not there because it uses the same repositories that uh, Ubuntu does in this case. So. On its back end, it uses uh, the Ubuntu repositories, but it provides a different visual experience, which is kind of neat. And I included a screenshot there of, uh, of Zorin OS. Now, what I found interesting about Zorin OS is they have really streamlined the whole customization thing to the point that it's just this kind of fluid, smooth, I make little changes and it, you know, it, it affects the way my desktop looks. And they provide a, um, a Windows XP, um, a Windows, uh, later Windows, I'm trying to think, Windows 7, um, you know, a menu experience. And they also provide a, a Mac OS experience with the, uh, with the Mac OS dock, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, and all that is sort of built into it already. So it's kind of like a, the uh, Zorin OS um, customization. It comes with some variations on the software. Like for instance, it comes with the Chromium browser, which is the non-branded version of the uh, Chrome browser. Uh, <clears throat> comes with LibreOffice pre-installed, has some games in there. It's um, it's really, frankly, kind of a beautiful little distribution. It's 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 slick. It's pretty. Uh, I installed it without any muss or fuss. Um, it's uh, it's it's a nice take. It's a nice look, and uh, it was one of the ones that I decided to give a try to. So um, that is my first distribution, Zorin OS. The next one, sure, um, is one that is best served cold. Oh, the Star Trek wow, reference. Wow, wow. Star Trek reference. Klingons. Oh, do I have? Do I do I have it? I I don't think. <laughs> I don't. I don't have it. I, I don't have the rim shot. That was that. that was oh, you had it. <laughs> that was horrible. So, all right, Revenge I'd like OS. To see the clip, you know, Revenge is a dish best served cold. Well, anyway, there's a distribution called Revenge OS, and uh, their tagline is "Because awesome shouldn't be so difficult." Although, frankly, I think it should be, you know, a distribution best served cold. <laughs> but that's just me. Right. Anyway, so take Revenge because awesome shouldn't be so difficult. Um, it is a, uh, as, as they describe it, a fast and easily configurable operating system is, you know, their sub tagline. And what's interesting about it is there are a whole bunch of choices that you can make as you're installing it. So where, um, where a lot of distributions provide a version that includes the KDE desktop, and then you download a different version if you want the, you know, the, uh, the GNOME desktop or the, uh, XS, XFCE desktop, you know, the, uh, the, the slimline one that looks more, um, you know, windowsy, um, they will tend to spin up a different distribution with these different desktops. What they've done with Revenge is it's all there in the installation. So when you're installing it, when it's going through the process of installing it, it actually says, well, which one do you want? You know, so it gives you the option as you're installing it for the look and, um, you know, and the specifications of whatever it is that you want to install. Now, I actually did a... And of course, it comes. It comes with uh, you know, lets you choose specific office suites. Um, it comes you know with your browsers, with programming environments. I mean, all this stuff is is already included in there. And of course, there is um, there is a lot of additional software in the repositories. Now, you remember uh, I talked to you about Arch Linux? We uh, talked yeah, about yeah. Arrow back in October. Was it September? October? Mm -hmm. I had switched to Manjaro at that time. I switched again, by the way, in case you're... <laughs> All right. In case you're trying to keep track, I've switched operating systems again. <laughs> right. And, and I mean, uh, so, yeah, and I just checked the video, 38 minutes. I mean, what do you show off in the video? Oh, uh, quite a bit. Actually, that one was, was interesting because I decided just for a laugh that I would do a live stream. So it is uh, often uh, when I do videos like this, uh, it's, I'm, I'm experimenting with doing live streams. Uh, I mean, I know that we're doing a live. I know that we're doing this live at the moment. Right. Um, when I do videos for Cooking with Linux, often I do everything behind the scenes. If something goes wrong, I fix it. You don't actually ever see me stumble and fall because... <laughs> I edit all that stuff out. <laughs> Amazing. So every once in a while, I thought I, I have done a couple, which is a live stream where I am basically operating without a net. It's like, let's do this today. I haven't even tried this. I haven't set this up. 
let's find out if this even works. Okay. And with Revenge OS, I did this as a live stream. And to be perfectly honest, I ran into a wall at the end of it. So if you <laughs> want to see that one, you can watch me fail. <laughs> no, but but I mean, that learning experience, though, that's a huge part of Linux. So I'm glad that you included that for sure. Well, it's a huge part of it's a huge part of, uh, of you know, learning any kind of tech. Let's be perfectly honest. But typically when someone pro when someone provides a video, OK, when somebody does a video on YouTube, um, they are showing you the finished polished version. In other words, yeah, I scratched my head here for half an hour trying to make this work. OK, but I'm not showing you that part. All right. Um, I was panicking because the, because, you know, I did something and I destroyed the thing that I was doing. And I think that for you, I mean, I know that you watch Twitch every now and then, like or a, or you were experimenting with Twitch anyway. I don't know if you've done. I, that, I, I still watch it daily and I plan and Computer America still does have a Twitch that we will be doing eventually. <laughs> eventually. Asterisk. Yeah, I promise a lot of things myself. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what um, what is interesting and what's, what a lot of people mention as interesting is the whole notion of watching somebody figuring it out. And uh, artists, for instance, there are artists on Twitch. There are a lot of gamers. Twitch doesn't seem to have figured that one out yet because Twitch, when you do a stream on Twitch, as you probably know, demands that you specify which game you're playing. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not playing a game. I'm doing this. But right. Twitch has Twitch hasn't really embraced the fact that people will do like arts and crafts, like paintings, for instance, or or they'll sh they, or somebody will do a cooking you'd, show. On Twitch you'd probably like have to so, go under the category of talk show. Is there a category for talk show? There's a category for talk show. There absolutely is. Oh, okay. I always did other game as the no, category. No, you you should definitely oh, okay. do talk show. That's that because that's essentially what you're doing with the live stream. It's very cool. Anyway, okay, that's good. That's good to know. I will remember that. Here, I'm going to scribble it down here. Sure. Go uh, with my fountain pen. I have a fountain <laughs> pen. Anyway, um, yeah. So on Twitch, it, one of the attractions. I mean, one of the things that people routinely point out that they like is the fact that they're watching people actually do stuff, as mm -hmm. you know, which means failing every once in a while. So you've got somebody who's really, really good. And what you learn when you do something like that is even the pros, even the people who do this every single day, you know, the ones who, who are the experts, you know, in, in a particular product, they still go through some of the same challenges. I have to explain that I went to my father every once in a while. He goes, well, you know, all this stuff. It's like, well, I beat my head against it like everybody else does, but I make it look easy because, you know, by the time I talk to you or by the time I show you something, I've gone through all the steps. I've gone through all the pain and suffering. So so even the people who really know this stuff um, will also have trouble with things, also have to learn, also have to go through the process. So, right. And that is one of the attractions of doing a live stream, either on YT Gaming, which is gaming.youtube.com, or um or on twitch and i've experimented on both but that particular one revenge os i did that i did that one live so that yeah, is yeah yeah and, and, and it's one of those things that like i you know uh, computer america obviously comes from a pedigree of radio we still do radio love to do radio still love our hour show but, i love radio yeah yeah but the uh but the honestly from what i'm seeing about television and from uh radio and many others they try to make it more interactive I honestly think you cannot get more interactive than a live stream because you can talk to people. You can see them. They ask questions of you. You can answer them right there because if one person watching has the same, if someone comes up behind and just watches the full video, hey, you know, they might have that question too. I think that Twitch – You know what? You should do a yeah. Periscope. I, you, you should know, do a Periscope on your next show. I know that you're live streaming like this, but just for the fun of it, you should do a Periscope as well. I, I, I got to figure out how to do that. I, I mean, you know, it's the, the back end is so confusing, but I, I honestly think live streaming is going to be the future of entertainment. So, yep. yeah, very cool that you do that and very cool that you did live stream this because it, – I, I will do more of them. I will do more right. of them. But there's no question that they will tend to be a little bit longer and, uh, and of course, you get to see my screw up. So Right. And maybe add like little highlight markers. You know, be like, oh, I started this here, here, here. Maybe that, but other than that, live streams are beautiful. So, with that being said, uh, wow, we have like five minutes left. Yeah, uh, wow. Okay, let's 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 quickly talk about the other one because I actually do want to touch on this one. Sure. Then there's Slackware. Okay, I want to mention Slackware because it's it, you know I was going to say it's 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 an old it's an oldie it's a goodie blah blah blah. But this is actually one of the grand old Linux distributions. It goes back to 1993. This is a guy named Patrick Volkerding, 
uh, who took another distribution, which was available at the time, like one of the earliest distributions, which was a bit of a mess called Soft Landing System Linux. I'll get beat up for it. But this is by a guy named Peter McDonald. And he put that one out in 1992. So what, what Patrick did was he wanted to basically clean that up and make it easier you know, to install and work with and so forth. And what's interesting about Slackware is it is the oldest continually maintained Linux distribution. It is still around. It is still maintained. And you can get a recent copy of it. Now, it shows its roots as being, if you'll pardon the expression, a one-person project. Because even the installer... And he, he's not just like the only person, but he's kind of like the, you know, the spiritual leader has been there from the beginning. Um, the, it, it's still a text only install and it can be a little bit bizarre to install software. So consequently, um, it comes with an, an option to basically install everything. Okay. <laughs> like, like basically just give me all of it so that I don't have to worry about whether or not something has gone wrong because because i'm missing one particular piece of software we'll just put everything there so um but it's not very big so, though um if you do the whole thing it, it doesn't look very big but if you do the whole thing and you tell it to install everything it, it's several gig by the time it installs okay. itself on your disk because these are all the compre it's it's built with a whole pile of compressed archives and so forth um... so um, I'm going to quickly, quickly touch, let's just move forward, quickly touch sure. on this. I had some issues. I was trying to create a complex document for the, for, for family, uh, over the weekend. And, uh, I, I've, I've been using Google docs a lot lately because, you know, it's just always there, right? I mean, I can pick up my, my phone or my tablet, but I just could not get it to do this complex document. It was driving me up the freaking wall. So I pulled out LibreOffice, which I frankly haven't been using a whole heck of a lot lately because, you know, like I said, the mobile beauty of of using Google Docs, but the flexibility, the, the kind of fine green control that I wanted just wasn't there. So I pulled out LibreOffice and, um, and the version that I had was kept crashing on me when I was doing these complex things. So I went out and I pulled out the latest and greatest. So LibreOffice 6.60 is available and I've got a link to the PPAs for people that are running like an Ubuntu distribution. It's uh, it's, it's slick. It's beautiful. Um, it, it was 100% stable. The complex things that I was doing just fell into place um, w without, you know, without any issues. So I would highly recommend that people take a look at it. I also, just as a comparison, wanted to show another commercial suite that offers a free download version, which is free Office. So again, I know we don't have any, we don't have a lot of time to spend on it, but I include the links in the show notes if people would like to try a, another distribution. Or sorry, not distribution, but another uh, office suite, which includes you know spreadsheet, presentation, graphics, etc. Right. Yeah. So. No. And and I've definitely heard of both of these. Uh, we definitely did cover LibreOffice when it first uh, updated to 6.0, and that was you know very cool of them. I mean, honestly, I think that the work that they did it made it look very modern. Uh, not exactly you know a a one-to-one -one comparison with the latest office but i mean if you need to get something done i can you know say that this is i would recommend this to anyone who doesn't want to spend money this is probably the best option out there and free and office, it's, available for, yeah. it's available for windows a whole bunch of different platforms so there's no reason not to use it right right and and, and the best and actually i need to get craig on you, you know craig crossman uh, host of the computer america show for 20 some odd years tech guru you know he still uses like uh, like a version of Office that still saves in .doc. I, I can't even open half of his Word yeah. documents. They're in .doc. .docx is important, folks. Get it done. I have a friend of mine who still uses WordStar for DOS. And he's, he's a major international <laughs> best-selling author. Seriously. <laughs> Man, the, some, some people. But still, very cool. And, uh, yep, all included in the show notes. And, folks, once again, ComputerAmerica.com and right there on the homepage will be everything we talked about here. Uh, Marcel, I'll let you have the last word. If people want to find out more about what you do, where can they go? Uh, well, they can go to MarcelGagne.com, which is my website, or CookingWithLinux.com if you just want the Linux-based stuff. Or if you want to follow my videos, my Cooking with Linux videos, go to YouTube, YouTube.com slash FreeThinkerAtLarge, F-R-E-E-T-H-I-N-K-E-R-A-T-L-A-R-G-E. -E -E. Subscribe, subscribe. I'm trying to get to that one magic 1,000 number, and I'm at 850 or something at the moment. So do it. Yeah, get, get it done. Do get it right it now. now. Get it done. I know I have. And everyone, uh, thank you so much for tuning into Computer America. And be sure to check us out here tomorrow. And let me just check see who's on the show tomorrow. Uh, wow, do I have time? I do. So, yeah, tomorrow on the program, join us as we will be talking with 
Uh, oh, uh, well, if everything goes as planned, we should be talking with Mr. Marty Piranak, uh, Piranik. And yeah, we'll see uh, everything about him and what he does. Folks, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Marcel. Have I lost you again? Oh, maybe. Marcel, uh, if you can hear me, thank you so much for tuning in or for joining us. And we look forward to next month as well. Everyone, until next time, thank you so much. Have a great one. Bye bye. Cheers. <laughs>